Now, before we begin, let's establish that steam locomotives have gone through a lot, a lot of overhauls and updates over the centuries since their initial conception. Steam explosions in general when it comes to boilers are generally fairly rare, especially in the modern age with modern safety standards. Back when things were being developed, they were a lot more common, and most of the time, this was due to too much pressure. A steam engine of any kind is a pressure-based system. The power comes from the pressure generated by the steam. And if that pressure exceeds what the engine itself, the hard materials, the metal involved, can handle, you're going to have some issues. There have been older style, particularly steam locomotives, that have had explosions this way. Now, as the technology developed, however, these were less common once people started understanding, more importantly, the limitations of the materials involved. They would wind up with functional steam locomotives and know what pressure they were good at. They would also start installing things called safety valves. I'm sure you may have heard of this if you're a rail fan, but safety valves are exactly what they sound like. These valves are designed to relieve the pressure in the boiler itself if it gets too high. However, this particular safety measure can't stop all kinds of steam explosion failures, especially when they're sometimes on purpose. Now this is pretty rare when someone does this on purpose, but I think the best example of this is the historical crash at Crush. Now the crash at Crush was actually a publicity stunt performed by one William George Crush, who was a general passenger agent of the Missouri-Kansas Texas Railroad, sometimes called the Katy or Caddy. I'm not sure how you say it, to be fair, but I'm gonna go with Katie because it sounds right. Anyway, he thought that people would really like to see two trains collide into each other, and looking at the picture, you can tell these were both American class, as they were the most popular type of steam engine at that time in terms of trains. And yes, 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 on September 15th, 1896, he did organize a publicity stunt with onlookers where these two trains did, in fact, barrel into each other, which is not a safe thing to do. Um, two people died. At least six uh, suffered non-fatal injuries. He was fired for a time, but then almost immediately rehired because the public felt like he didn't do anything wrong, which is just such a suggestion of how far our culture has progressed in the last century. If you ever lose hope in humanity, remember that we th used to think that this kind of thing was a good idea. As a result of the impact, uh, the engines did suffer boiler failures and explosions. Now, that is at least partially to do with their old style design. But back then, boilers were quite as rigorously built. They were a little thinner. They weren't necessarily built for the potential of, you know, head-on collisions. So there was a much more of a risk of this exact thing happening. You may think that there were certain, you know, steam locomotive accidents where the boilers didn't just explode, and that's true. A lot more modern designs, particularly in the 1900s, did see fit to strengthen boilers to prevent this exact thing from happening, even in the event of a head-on collision, which did happen. But back then, this was not only likely, but basically guaranteed. And yes, flying debris went everywhere. And yes, as I said, two people died. And weirdly, more railroads did it because it was alarmingly successful because people apparently were super freaking bored. I don't know. But that's not really what you want to talk about, is it? This is on purpose. This really isn't the kind of explosion we're dealing with. We want to know what causes a steam locomotive to fail on accident. Like, when it's not on purpose, when there's, you know, a problem. And that's a very complicated topic, to be honest, because there are many things that can go wrong in a steam locomotive that can cause the type of failure that we're discussing. In the case of the picture, you're probably wondering what all those pipes are, and those pipes are called smoke pipes, and they are do literally what you think they do. They channel the smoke from the firebox through the locomotive, through the boiler, to distribute the heat more evenly. So when an explosion happens, especially in the rear, um, it tends to, you know, force them forward. Hence why this looks just, just like a horrifying mess, let's be real. Um, but most of what goes wrong, 
the, most of them that I've been able to find in terms of details, in terms of exactly why steam engines have exploded historically when it comes to locomotives in particular, usually involves the crown sheet. Now the crown sheet is a critical component of the firebox. It has what are called stays that stabilize things and the crown sheet along with the rest of the sheets surrounding the firebox absorb the heat from the fire and you know, create steam from the water that is supposed to stay around the sheets at all times, in particular the crown sheet. The one major flaw with a crown sheet, and this is critical to safe operation of any steam locomotive that involves this type of layout, is that the crown sheet must always be wet. Period. End of story. This isn't up for freaking debate. If the crown sheet gets dry for any amount of time, it will get red hot. And when water does reach it again, what will happen is basically immediate vaporization uh, to an accelerated degree to the point that not only will the crown sheet itself fail and cause what's called a backdraft explosion but it can also cause a, just a complete total failure of the boiler itself there was actually a case of this happening at the gettysburg railroad in 1995. now that heritage railway is no longer in service to the general public partially because of this incident. The incident involved the Canadian engine 1278 that originally belonged to the Canadian Pacific Railway, which we've talked about before. But it wasn't actually the engine itself's fault. Those responsible for the railway were not trained and or just didn't care to do proper maintenance on any of their steam locomotives. The result is that they didn't know how low the water was getting. It had what it's called a water glass and they insisted it was half full, which to be honest is too low, but it wasn't even operating correctly. There are also a whole bunch of different gauges inside a normal steam engine that would have told them that things were getting too low and they had to put more water in the engine itself. But a lot of those gauges were either not working or removed. So that was great. Um, good work, guys. They were significantly fortunate, actually. While the crew of three suffered severe burns, they did live through the accident this particular locomotive's crown sheet design. The stays in the crown sheet on most of them, particularly the older ones, are uniform. They're often set up at right angles from each other, creating little squares. However, 1278's was diamond shaped, and this was on purpose, because if a crown sheet were to fail, the stays, when they're diagonal this way, tend to break the reaction of the crown sheet completely failing, limiting the damage overall. This is probably the only reason why no one was killed during this incident, and why the engine itself survived mostly intact. After the Gettysburg Railway stopped doing, you know, these types of ex tourist excursions, 1278 found itself to the Age of Steam Roundhouse in Sugar Creek, Ohio, where it sits dormant. Like I said, it's inside a roundhouse, so it is out of the weather, but the damage it suffered on that day still remains. They haven't actually fixed it, although it is repairable and could, if desired, run under steam power again, being a testament to its overall design because it didn't wind up like this. Ah, yes. I suppose we should get to the real, you know, meat of the discussion. What results in a steam engine looking like this? Well, like I said when I started this video, do you have any idea how hard I had to dig to figure out exactly where this picture is from and what engine was in it? Because this picture gets circulated all over the place on the internet, but none of the articles, mostly on BuzzFeed type websites that only want to show you shock pictures about, oh my god, it looks amazing, oh, it's ridiculous, it's horrifying, that's scary, whatever, you know, and then you know, just, just for clicks, no one could seem to give me a date or a type of locomotive or anything that I could use to actually give you a detailed response to the history of this particular picture. This isn't the only image like this, but this is the one that I think is the most famous, and I wanted to know what this train was. Where did it happen? What is it? Again, this was a lot more effort than I usually put into this kind of thing, but it was important for me, just, just out of principle, to figure out what this thing was, and I did it. This is a Chesapeake in Ohio, 2104 T1 locomotive. <sighs> Not to be confused with the Pennsylvania Railroad's T1 or the T1s we just talked about in the last top five video. They're completely different T1s again. And no, I don't know why there are three completely different steam engines all called T1, but these are different. Now the Chesapeake and Ohio T1s, again, 2104s, were big, big trains and they were actually very good 
They were powerful, they were efficient, and they were the workhorses of the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway for many years. Their designs were considered exceptional. So what the heck could cause one to fail so drastically? Well, believe it or not, it's the same thing that resulted in the Gettysburg Railway incident. Except this time it was more catastrophic because this engine had an older style crown sheet with square style stays. Now I apologize, I could not give you an exact date, I can only tell you it sh probably happened sometime in the 1930s. But it was a T1 class number 3020, and it was hauling coal from Columbus, Ohio to Russell, Kentucky. It was pulling 156 cars, which is a big train, I think, you know, doesn't need to be said, but this engine was working incredibly hard that day, and it was only running about 20 miles per hour overall. In addition, at the time of the accident, it was up going up a 0.18% grade, which isn't like the steepest grade in the world by train standards, but any kind of grade with the amount of weight that this train would have had in it, estimations say it was at about 13,000 tons, meant that, you know, even a slight incline was going to stress the engine more than was reasonable. It had a crew of three, the engineer, the fireman, and the front-end brakeman, and they were all killed in the explosion. They did not survive, though the brakeman did live long enough to give a testimony about the incident. As it was headed up the grade, the engine did suffer a crown sheet failure, and the inevitable explosion occurred, resulting in the picture you now are looking at. The real question is what caused the crown sheet failure in this case, and remember how I said that it was really important to keep the crown sheet wet literally all the time? Well, according to the brakeman, and he was able to explain this before he died, he said that he repeatedly told the engineer that the water was too low. He had extra water and he needed to put it in the boiler. The engineer apparently completely ignored him and decided that the engine was fine and did not put more water in it. Some of the quotes from the brakeman say things like, I told him that he had water and to put some in the boiler, and the water is gone. The water was too low. I knew it was going to happen. As I said, all three crew members did die this day, and it was pending investigation due to the crown sheet failure, due to the fact the engineer failed to put enough water in the boiler to keep the crown sheet wet. When it got too low, the crown sheet overheated, and when he finally put more water in the boiler, the instant vaporization of the steam caused a chain reaction that blew both backwards and forwards, killing the crew and decimating the engine itself. The only good thing to come out of this is, weirdly enough, they actually repaired the engine, and it was put back into service, which... I don't even know how you begin to do that looking at this picture, but I mean, according to my source, they did fix it. So the engine did wind up living, although this type apparently was fully scrapped by 1953. So I don't believe there's any survivors of these particular T1s either way. But still, I can't get over this story, and I don't really understand the engineer's logic here. Was he just annoyed that the brakeman was harassing him about, you know, handling his engine? Like, you know, hey, I'm the engineer, I know better than him, which, great, except you didn't, because the water was too low. Any engineer worth their salt who's been trained properly will know that you have to keep water in that boiler, otherwise you can suffer a cataclysmic failure such as they did. So why would he go out of his way to not do that? I mean, if the brakeman noticed, he had to know. And it wasn't like they were out of water in their tanks, he could have put more water in it and just didn't? I don't know. It's kind of hard to, you know, question his logic, well, I mean, it's easy to question it, but it's hard to get answers as to his logic because the man died. You know, he died in the accident, so, like, we don't know why he failed to put more water in the boiler. It wasn't like this was a hard thing to do. Just, it's part of your job, just just do it. I, I, what? I, I, I don't get it. Was he suicidal? Was he dumb? Was he just being stubborn? I, I, I can't fathom the logic behind this. And it's just sad that three people had to die just because someone decided, I, I, you know, it'll be fine. I can't imagine what could possibly go, oh, oh, right, that. Now, you may be alarmed by these discussions, but as I've already said, steam explosions are actually pretty rare. The steam engines, you know, 
with modern technology and safety standards, are considerably much safer than they used to be, especially back in the day. So, this type of failure, as long as it's resulting in safe operation, is extremely unlikely. Well, I don't want you to, you know, your opinion of steam trains to sour on these. I just have to remember, if you're ever in charge of running a steam engine, and the water looks a little low, put more water in it! Look, just do it! There's literally no reason not to. Just, it, it, it's fine. You, you, you know, you, you, just, 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 just keep water in the damn boiler. I, 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 don't, I don't know why this is so hard. Till next time. This is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.